Hello once again, my chickadees. Game and Chick back with a long delayed review. Before we begin, I'd like to give a big thank you to 34 Big Things for providing me with the review key to make this review possible. It's much appreciated. So come on, everyone, let's do a barrel roll. Let's -a go. Space Assault is an arcade on rail game, in the vein of titles such as Star Fox, and is developed and published by 34 Big Things. Having already been successful with 2016's arcade racing game of the same name, Redout, 34 Big Things decides to take this title a step further, and attempts to show us just how the racing league from 2016's title came to be. But is it worth knowing how it all came to be? Is it a satisfying journey in both narrative and gameplay? We'll just have to find out. So, let's go! Story Set centuries before the introduction of the Redout Racing League and the colonization of the solar system, you play as Leon Barrett, a pilot working with the Poseidon Corp. Your job is to help transfer civilians in a project that you and the company eventually hope will end in the colonization of Mars and beyond. But there may be more hidden beneath the surface and secrets to uncover along the way that Leon was not expecting. Gameplay as stated before, Redout Space Assault is an on-the-rails arcade shooter in the style of games such as Star Fox, on SNES, and N64. In what can be considered a pretty drastic departure from its original racing roots in the 2016 title, Redout Space Assault tries to tell us the origin story of how the Racing League was started and what events transpired that got us there in the first place. It's a task to me that on the one hand I feel succeeded, but on another, I feel it falls a little short. We're in mixed bag territory, sorry to say. The great thing about this title from the get-go is its ease of play. You don't need some lengthy tutorial or long drawn-out set piece to play out in order for you to get to know how the game works, or stop you from jumping right into the action. I'm looking at you, Twilight Princess. I'll never forgive you. From the start of the first mission, which is the actual tutorial mission itself, you're thrusted right into the action of this on-the-rail shooter as you're given the objective to just get to the end of the level and kill everything in your path. Simple, right? Well, yeah, that's because it is. Very basic. In this short beginning tutorial, which will only last you a few minutes, you will learn the basics, such as your normal gunfire, locking onto enemies so that you may kill a group of them in one hit using your missiles, spinning left and right to avoid enemies using a barrel roll, and that's pretty much it. That's the core of what you're going to use at the beginning of your journey through the main game's campaign mode. As Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys would say, It doesn't take rocket appliances. And he's totally right! Once you've gotten through the main tutorial, it's time to dive into the main game story and other gameplay mechanics that they have in store for us. Which really isn't that many, sad to say. Once into the first official mission of the main campaign, you're treated to the start of the main narrative that tells you the story of your job working as a pilot for the Poseidon Corps. That involves you taking civilians and transferring them to different areas, with the ultimate end goal being to colonize Mars and the solar system itself. Sounds pretty interesting, right? Well, on paper, yes it is but as you push through its narrative piece, it just feels underwhelming. The things that are spoken of by the friendly AI through voice acting either doesn't have enough emphasis behind their convictions and the line delivery, or you just find yourself zoning out on what they're talking about, because it's just done in a way that really doesn't keep your focus long enough to care about it ultimately. So the game has to fall back to its crutch and what people are really here for, the gameplay. During your time spent with Red Out Space Assault, you'll be treated through four different gameplay modes and mechanics, such as Free Flight Mode, Combat, Racing, Boss Battles, all of which offer their own unique style of gameplay. With Free Flight Mode, it acts like Star Fox 64's All Range Mode, which allows you to freely roam around specific areas unrestricted by the on-the-rails gameplay. This opens up minimal amounts of exploration, as well as various ways to take on boss battles when the time is just right. However, most of the time it's relegated to just flying around and collecting something and that's it. Not too exciting, but it can be a welcome change in pace if on the rails gets a little too repetitive. Racing missions are also present in racing mode, but they do not feel as fluid or as responsive as they did in 2016 spread out. In an on the rail focused shooter, the mixing of these two genres just don't mesh well and it feels like a case of trying too hard when really the game wouldn't have been any different without its inclusion. Don't get me wrong, they're not terrible or unplayable, it's just that they feel a little bit unneeded with the way they're presented. 
But at least it offers a little bit of fun, right? Either way, we ought to have a lot of fun, huh? Finally, we have combat mode. The reason why we're going right into combat mode here is because combat mode and boss mode blend directly into each other. Combat mode makes up roughly 90% of what you do in this game, with your on-the-rails missions that you take from point A to point B, and takes you through a variety of areas and set pieces where you mow down all your enemies with your normal gunfire, as well as your missile attacks. Every once in a while, just like Star Fox, you will come into contact with actual boss battles, and man do these things range from really fun to really frustrating at times. Now, I've noticed a certain trend here. I seem to get fixated on my favorite parts of certain titles being the boss battles, and the trend of course continues here. The boss battles to me is where the game's potential can be seen. Each boss battle you encounter offers you a different way to think or play, and equal amount of rage at times. One moment, you're beating up an enemy boss and you're thinking to yourself, Man, that's it? Okay. But then BAM! Here comes this bullet hell barrage from all sides of you, and sometimes not even barrel rolling your heart out will save you and you'll eventually just have to take the L and try once more. But thankfully, after meeting your end, you're thrusted immediately back into the fray and get started right where you left off at the boss fight again. So thank Beepu for that! Overall to me, the most awe-inspiring fights though in this game, in regards to boss fights, are the David vs. Goliath moments you encounter. It leaves you feeling like a needle in a haystack with all these giant towering ships towering around you. Extra stuff. Whoops, we almost forgot. There's an actual upgrade system in the game that allows you to update various parts of your ship, as well as unlock extra skins using currency and credits that you pick up for completed missions, or from objects you'll find scattered around during all range mode, free flight. Using your credits, you are able to upgrade your hull, shield, missiles, and your weapons. But there's just one issue. It does not feel worth it. Even after upgrading multiple times and maxing out specific stats, it never felt like I was getting stronger, or that I was taking less damage. I never felt I was out-leveling or outpacing my enemy, no matter what upgrades I made to my shields or weapons. It's a bit of a disappointment for me as someone who likes to ground out my stats and basically decimate my opponents in any game I play. But having spent hours leveling stats to achieve this goal, in the end, I was just left disappointed that it was not achievable in the first place. Definitely a bummer. Overall, at the end of the day, Red Out Space Assault does provide some fun for people that are scratching that on-rail shooter itch but it ultimately ends up being a case of massive frash, where itching it might make your symptoms worse. At its core, Red Out Space Assault is an enjoyable little romp for what it's attempting to be, but where it falls short is in its narrative and its put-too-much-eggs-in-a-basket mentality. Combat can be fun and engaging in spurts, but you're left feeling the sense of, why am I not playing Star Fox instead? And yes, that even includes you, Star Fox Zero. If you're wanting a quick on-the-rails game that offers you a few hours of fun, then I say have at it and get it. You might enjoy it. It's only $10. Normally I would say pass on this title if it were any more than that, but for $10, at that low of a price, it's worth it for what it offers. Just barely. So with that, Game & Chick says bye now. Although very hesitantly. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that review, and I look forward to bringing more to you in the coming future. For new people, feel free to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like or share. And for people already subscribed, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you do not miss out on any future content of it. Also, feel free to click on my other reviews linked above because they're kind of cool too. So give them a look. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch all you chickadees on the next one. Quick!